Is it all gone? Do you need to? Oh no, it's fine. Don't worry. I can see here. Cool. We're live. We're live. Yeah. Hey guys. <laughs> How are you? I'm like, I always look like I'm just staring at my phone whenever we go live, but I'm actually not. I'm actually trying to find the group so that I can check um, where we are. There we are, you see, Hick? Oh, there we are. So what I like to do is uh, press play on it. Oh, yeah, get, get your apron all centered there. <laughs> Guys, this is my uh, very good friend, Dervla. Many of you who are in America will be looking at her name and thinking, Dervla, Dervla. You know, the Irish have this way of spelling names and... Lots of consonants. Yes, just lots of consonants. Bring them in. And just to confuse you, the sound of the name doesn't look like the spelling. So Dervla actually, you know what? I was just thinking upstairs whenever I went to change my top because I spilled my lunch all over it. I was actually just thinking about when we first met. Yeah. And it's a, it's not, it's not that it's a funny story. So, but I'll tell you about it very briefly. Today, uh, Dervla is going to make fermented salsa. Now, and I know many of you might be going, really? We're making salsa? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Um, well, I'll tell you, that was kind of my reaction whenever I first met Dervla, to be honest. So I'm going to explain uh, why and how. I remember our kids went to the same school. Whenever my kids were younger, they went to school. And actually, my second son has just gone back to the school that they used to go to. It's a Waldorf school, Rudolf Steiner School. And Dervla's kids were there. And now you're like, what is she going to say here? <laughs> and I remember they were there. At, at the time, I had been trying and failing miserably to start online businesses for quite a long time. And I had started this company called the Work at Home Moms Network. Do you remember? That's, I remember the that. The Work at Home Moms Network. <laughs> so I started this company, the Work at Home Moms Network. And um, I was, it was doing reasonably well. And I, I had built a, a, a reasonable, reasonably successful business from home. And I was really foraying into the, the world of online marketing. And Derbla was just starting out, starting her company, The Cultured Club. Working from home. <laughs> and we have like, her recipe books here. Actually, we have two of them. I'll show you the American one. She was just starting The Cultured Club. And I remember chatting to her in the car park, and we'd only just met. And I was telling her about the Working Home Moms Network. And Derbla said to me, and I said, you know, listen, I said, if you're interested in learning about business or online business, like, I'll totally give you a free membership. You know, you're like a mom here and whatever. And I remember you were like, God, that is, you know, that's so kind of you. That is wonderful. Like in return, I would love to, uh, you know, to invite you to one of my my work, my fermentation workshops. And I was like, great, that's <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Thanks. Thinking, what the fuck is a fermentation workshop? Beer, S beer. <laughs> yeah, it's like beer <laughs> or, or, or gin, maybe. So what happened was a Derva was running these workshops on a Saturday, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, in a Michelin star restaurant in Belfast owned by parents of kids at the school called Ox. And I remember thinking, God, I wish I hadn't have agreed to go to this thing because it, I'm like, you know, why did I get myself into this? So I turned up on the Saturday anyway, and Ryan said to me, what are you going to do? And I was like, I'm, I'm going to some workshop with a fermentation workshop. And he said, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? And I was like, I really have no idea what I'm going to do or what we're going to be learning. But, you know, it's this <laughs> girl. Oh, bless you. <laughs> that was Ryan, our cameraman, sneezing. Um, and so anyway, I turned up, I turned up on this, um, I turned up on this day to the, uh, to the workshop with Jarvla. And literally, my mind was blown. And I'll tell you why my mind was blown. Because as um, I was a vegetarian at the time, I wasn't vegan. Or was it? No, I wasn't vegan at the time. I was vegetarian. But as uh, I was into yoga, I was a yoga teacher. I had a yoga detox. Well, I hadn't, didn't have it then. So we were talking about the, yeah, the timeline's gone. Timeline's yeah. a bit fuzzy. But anyway, I was, I was definitely into yoga. I was super extremely into health, mm. massively into health. And I turned up to this workshop and Derva started explaining. She wasn't just like teaching us how to ferment vegetables, um, but really just started explaining about the benefits of um, fermentation, which we're going to talk about today. Uh, on your gut health, on your overall health, on your microbiome, on your serotonin levels, all of the stuff that I was hugely interested in. And I kind of feel that it was meant to be that day because it took me off on a journey of fermentation after that. And um, we've stayed obviously close friends mm. ever since, even though we don't see each other as much anymore. Too but busy. yeah, <laughs> but it's like no time has passed whenever we're together. So I asked her to come here today to not only talk about to not only teach you how to make one of my favorite dishes, which is a fermented salsa, because some of the ferments are a bit, you know, Derva's palate's a little more sophisticated than mine when it comes to it. And some of them are, you know, everyone has obviously their own preferences. So today, this isn't really just a masterclass on how to make the salsa. Um, it is a masterclass on health, really, which is really what I'm going to start as you're cooking. I'm going to start mm -hmm. throwing those questions at you. Um, 
So any questions that you have before we begin, I really want you to, um, or any questions that come up, um, I have the questions open here, everyone's starting commenting. So I have I have it open here, and I wanna, any questions you have for Durbla about anything to do with not only fermentation, but to do with gut health, to do with, um, I don't know, what are your areas of expertise, Durbla, tell us. I think the main thing is gut health, but when you really start to look at gut health, everything starts to stem from gut health. So the minute you begin to look at that area, the minute you sort that area out, then your mental health starts to improve, your skin health, your, I mean, seemingly unrelated illnesses like respiratory illnesses, all sorts of things start to improve with improving your gut health. So work with that and then everything spills out from it. So And your can, family though, tell us a bit about your background. Your family are pharmacists. So I, I'm the black sheep. She's the black I'm sheep. I'm the black That's sheep, but, the, so but the, black, the black sheep are here to lead the way, I really <laughs> believe. Uh, I come from a very medical family. So my father was a pharmacist um, who had essentially me pinned as the as the one to take on the business because I have older brothers and they all became doctors. And he always thought that a female pharmacist would do really, really well because she could, you know, understand everybody's issues. As yes, opposed to just emotional as well yeah, as physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was kind of um, earmarked to become the pharmacist and spent, I'd say, from my 15 years on any time off, any weekends, any summer holidays in the pharmacy, learning the ropes. And by the time I came to 18 to make up my mind as to what I wanted to do. Pharmacy definitely wasn't the option for me because I, yeah, I really see, I see medicine not just as pharmaceutical, I see it as food, I, I see it as lifestyle, I see it as many different things. So fortunately for my dad, I didn't take on the pharmacy, but I became so intrigued in health and I see it more as pharmacy with an F. I see it as food that's grown on a farm becomes your medicine. And you are best-selling author, Durbel. Oh, yes. It looks like two books, which is kind of cheating because it's really hard. <laughs> one's so, been translated. She bought, she brought this one along. She was like, "Do you have a copy of my book?" And I was like, uh, "Not of that book, but this one's for the American market." Yes. Is that right? Yeah. And this one is the UK market, but they are actually the same. They're product. pretty much the same book. Yeah. Just uh, one's this one's updated. It was published three years ago. Whereas the one before was four years ago. So just, you know, recipes slightly tweaked and mm. um, obviously measurements different and some names of, of certain vegetables slightly different. And we have a little surprise oh. today because um, one of uh, you lucky people who are here live today, who made the time to show up tonight, are going to win a copy of Durbel's book. And what we're going to do is we are going to have it delivered here to Belfast. I'm just going to choose someone from someone who comments. So make sure you comment loads. Um, and ask loads of questions. Uh, and then Derba's gonna shout out who, who's gonna win, and we'll do that at the oh, end. Okay. Uh, but what she's gonna do, oh, you haven't actually signed this one, have you? No, it's it's signed on in. Oh, is that, oh, okay. To I was you. gonna say she could do this one, because I ordered this <laughs> one, I just, it's brand new, is it signed on in? So what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get the, the uh, book delivered here. Derba is going to sign it for you. I didn't tell you that you're gonna that's do okay. this, but that's okay. I'm, I'm and then uh, we're gonna <laughs> ship it off to you wherever you are in the world. So copy of Durbin's book today, um, wherever you are in the world, winging its way to you. Just to somebody who's shown up live, we're just gonna choose randomly from the comments. Um, and, um, or maybe maybe I might choose an intelligent question. I haven't yeah, quite decided yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, whoever asked the best question, maybe. Um, <laughs> then, no, I'm only joking, we will we'll choose someone live to win a copy of Durbin's book. So, Durbla, tell us what we're going to do today. And um, any questions you have, guys? Throw them in here. Massively knowledgeable, just so you know. I'll answer. I'll answer them all as I can. Um, so we are going to make the fermented salsa, as we said, um, mainly be because questions. that is kind of like a gateway ferment. It's salsa unfermented has got that kind of zing to it because we use a lot of lime in it. So you know, this is kind of an easy transition over to a fermented food for people that are. I'm feeling a little bit kind of nervous about the word fermented. I think it's a word that brings up an awful lot of issues for people where they're going, does that mean it's off? Yeah. Does that mean I'm going to like have sore tummy? Does that smell a bit weird? Yes. Yeah. And definitely, um, if anybody's familiar with sauerkraut, uh, I think I hated sauerkraut by, before I'd even tasted it, just by some sort of connotation of the name. It suggests sour. Uh, you open the jar, it really smells really quite strong. Um, so, you know, fermentation crosses over this line into a territory that we're not so familiar with. And, and I think 
we're in an age where you go into the supermarket and the supermarket does not smell of food. It's the oddest thing in the yeah, world. It's true. You walk into a supermarket and it doesn't smell of food. Whereas if you maybe go into a smaller shop um, when you're away on holidays somewhere in Europe. Or in, France, in Europe. Or yeah. in Europe. And we have a lot of like, Americans here. And so they say vacation. On way. vacation. Holidays yes. means Christmas in oh, America. okay. So vacation. You have to be used to the lingo. Uh, but yeah, they all know what I mean anyway. Yeah, if you go into like France or Spain or something, yeah. you go into the markets. You uh, get that walk, smell. Yeah. You get that smell of food. So I think fermentation, when you start to bring that into the kitchen, it's still something that we're just like not so comfortable with. But that's changing. Like we are becoming more experimental and more into different and nearly the more it smells the more we're kind of um our senses are woken up and the more we're intrigued and the more we want to taste and you know I kind of find with fermentation you get this uh it, it starts to inspire the saliva glands mm -hmm. to do this oh God, it's like salt and vinegar crisps it. do you ever smell whenever you're younger I you opened a packet of salt and vinegar crisps and Derb was like she's bastard no no, like, no 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 it's fine it's fine it's fine I like salt and vinegar crisps I like salt and vinegar Oh, makes them go all funny whenever you smell it. That's what's yeah. for me. But but just to point out, vinegar is fermented. That's the perfect right. example. Yeah. So you know, vinegar is uh, apples or grapes or whatever it is that have been fermented that then have that sourness or that zing that inspires your digestive juices to start flowing. And that kind of brings us to the idea as to why we would do it when we go to ferment something. We are doing it with the, with not only taste in mind, because it's for me, it's a taste is a big thing, but we're doing it to inspire our digestive systems to get to work. Already in the mouth, our digestive systems are going, oh my God, great, there's something really good right. incoming. And uh, we've got the kind of digestive fire underway. And yeah, it's it's kind of getting Darla, prepared. Before we get started into the salsa, talk to us about, of course, you know, coronavirus is big on everyone's minds at the minute. and you know, of course, you and I go hell for leather, like uh, protect your immune system yeah. <laughs> rather than, you know, not All the other stuff. Than, but <laughs> maybe other alternative, more extreme measures. Uh, they all know my stance on coronavirus and vaccines. But how, talk to us about how fermentation can protect your immune system. OK, so our immune system is 80 percent located in our gut. So this is a major, major point, which I don't think is given enough credit or enough focus. So we say immune system and immediately, like, where do you locate it? Where do you think this, mm -hmm. this immunity is coming from? So if 80% of it is in our gut, then the most logical next step is that we want our gut to be a favorable place. We want it to be a place where our immune system can thrive and we can have you know, an abundance of these beneficial microbes that will do the job of protecting us when we need it. Uh, say if any pathogen is coming in to, to cause us um, any ill health. So because they come in through the mouth, obviously they go into the stomach, into the bloodstream and then into the digestive system. Yeah, in yeah, mm -hmm. through the mouth or, you know, if you're breathing them in or whatever. Um, one thing just to, it, it may be located in the gut, but this, I'm going to talk about bacteria and microbes quite a bit as we're going through this. And I have to highlight and, and make you all aware, first of all, that we have this kind of immediate stance that bacteria is like mm -hmm. bad because antibacterial is the word on everybody's lips. Um, but I really need to point out that not all bacteria are bad. And in fact, only 5% of bacteria are bad. Only 5% will cause you know, that illness. And I'm talking about E. coli or salmonella or listeria or whatever. So we have 5% of bacteria that are bad, meaning we have 95% of bacteria that are good. And really, that's what we should be putting our focus on. We should be putting our focus on always trying to maintain that level of really, really beneficial bacteria in our, in our gut, or what we can now more affectionately call our microbiome. So that's that's the ecosystem that is inside our inside our bodies that mostly resides in our gut. And I think I've just forgotten the percentage, but we are like for every cell, 10% bacteria. So we're 10% cell, the other 90% bacteria. So we're talking about, you know, this bacterial world or so microbial world. 10% cell, 90% bacteria. Yes. So for wow. every cell in our body that make make us human we have 10 times that bacteria wow so we are like this massive bacterial entity encased in a bacterial a cellular, farm, right so yeah. nothing to worry about then 
nothing to worry about but 90 percent of this is good you know we're talking about it's good bacteria now we have to see is good and a lot of um well two one thing i want to add to that if i may before we get started is one of the things i teach especially inside my yoga talks program which sells really well is that your your digestive system not only is you're obviously in charge of keeping your body healthy and your 80 percent of your serotonin levels and and everything derva's been talking about it's also the place where your body dumps toxins so your body your liver uh, whenever you eat your food goes into your stomach into your small intestine then it's absorbed through the uh, the wall of the small intestine into the blood sent to the liver to cleanse your liver then dumps toxins into um, the gallbladder via the bile, the bile is then released into the digestive system, which is full of cholesterol and toxins and hormones and anything your liver wants to get rid of. And then your digestive system carries it out. So if you keep your digestive system healthy, you are literally, it's like, I was going to say it's like the toilet of, and it actually is like the toilet of your body, but you are actually carrying out the healthier you keep your digestive system, the healthier your body will be simply because your digestive system is the area that not only carries everything out, but as Jarvis said, killed the, the, the bacteria in there can kill the bad bacteria. So it's not reabsorbed back through the large intestine into the blood and circulates through the body. It is such an incredible way to keep your body healthy. And I think they should be teaching this in school. They should not teaching Pythagoras' theorem, totally but how to protect yes. your bloody immune system and how yeah. waste is carried out from your body and excess hormones yeah. and excess. Anyway, don't get me started. So that's why we're here. Yeah, I think the toxic mm-hmm. load that we all carry around is something that is just completely enormous yeah it is enormous and and therefore if we're not looking after this um this colon essentially which is the main area you know if we're not looking after this area and there's a backlog then just the the havoc it wreaks is Mm -hmm. just terrible on your health so you know what we're trying to do with um bringing ferment fermented foods into our diet is creating this ease of it's it's like um traffic flow it's like you know there's no congestion it's just things are Fermented foods kind of go in, like I, I often compare it to like day trippers, you know, they go into a city, they do what they do, they improve the economy, they buy stuff and then they go home. It's yeah. great, you know, yeah. and, and the city's great. The city is being a city and it's all good. Yeah. Whereas um, if we don't, if we don't have people coming into the city, as we have seen last year, you know, cities die. It's cities stagnant. are like, you know, what, what is... And it's really not good. So um, I don't haven't further developed that analogy That's for a COVID great times. But... <laughs> I like that. I'm a big one for using metaphors. Yeah, it seems it seems to take it away from the deep dark you know bowels into you know something that you can appreciate a bit more. But yeah. I do think that when you bring fermented foods in, you're you're just changing this landscape and making it a smooth, cleaner. Just you know, your digestive system ends up functioning like it should do basically one more question before we start um yeah. how what is kind of the minimum amount of fermented foods you would um recommend that somebody eat daily and so is there an upper limit there it's kind of more based on where your health is at i find that they're an amazing indicator of where your health is at mm-hmm. so for somebody uh, say for example that is in you know really particularly good um inner health shall we say they can they can eat a fermented food and not feel anything. They can perhaps just have a craving for more. You know, their their body go, oh my god, that's really really good. Give me more. But then on the other end of the scale, if you have somebody who is possibly dealing with various digestive issues, like you know maybe as far as Crohn's or some kind of autoimmune IBS disease or, or leaky gut or yep, any of those, what they may find is they'll have a tablespoon or two possibly because sometimes hard to just have a tablespoon if it's a new flavor and you're exploring it and then they might feel like they get a little cramp or possibly a little bit of gas or Mm -hmm. in a in a other extreme you know maybe just like really feel the effects of it quite quite bloating bloating yes Mm -hmm. and also um, like maybe for some people i i know one person this is extreme case she has um uh, histamine intolerance and and but that comes from you know a, a long line of leaky gut issues and on all sorts of health issues and for this person they had one taste of the fermented food and they literally passed out because their body goes into a shock like that's extreme so but it totally indicates to you that these foods are alive powerful. they're so powerful they would suggest that one t- a one tablespoon serving 
is like taking six probiotic capsules. Wow. So, you know, the things you buy in the, mm -hmm. in the pharmacy or whatever, um, which I think maybe you're suggested to take, you know, two, yeah, three times a day, day or something. Yeah. No, I think it's um, like one or two a day. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've um, never taken them because you don't need to. <laughs> don't need to. <laughs> uh, so, yes, one tablespoon is suggested to have as much live bacteria in it as, as you know, a very wow. healthy dose of probiotics. Okay, so enough of the talking you're saying. Now that we've convinced yes. you, hopefully, let's. Uh, I like, should take good have... practice and wash my hands because I've yes. been like touching my hair. Can I just? Yes. Can I just you wash this... your hands. I'm going to look at the questions in here. My pocket. Um, there's actually the soap is on the window ledge behind. I'll oh, just give them a wash without oh. soap. No, it's okay. No, oh, you don't want to. I don't want the soap. No. Oh, oat soup. An oat soup. An oat. And I just touched my hair again. I'm terrible ah, for touching my hair. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm sure your hair is clean. It is clean. It is clean. <laughs> clean okay. Video. So we have a couple of questions coming up, but I'll save them to while you're doing what you're doing. So okay. what are you going to do first? So I think I'm just going to, so we can just show we them. do, yeah. yeah. Um, so will I just show how to chop? Or yeah, we just do the show whole thing? how you would do Yeah, just show like, how you would do it. I, I can, can help. I can chop to, really, yeah. If you want me to these. chop as well, I can. Can I mix everything in this bowl? You can do everything. I can get you a bigger one. Do you want a bigger one? Let's get a bigger one. I think how big, because we have like this big up here. Oh, that's is... too big. Just okay, so middle size? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to make the equivalent. But not metal? Oh, oh it's okay at the minute. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Well, I'd give you plastic if you prefer plastic, would you? It can be any bowl. Or yeah. glass would be better because, you know, plastic free kitchen and all that. Then you can see through it. Okay. Well, now, wow. now I'm giving her like now the, we're having the finest bowl. We're very cosmopolitan in this in this house. We have both. Now I've got a choice. Yeah. I don't know which one you want, so. So this recipe is literally your classic salsa. Um, and I was a big salsa fan anyway before, but was always really disappointed. And I think this has been a great lesson with fermentation is that you make something, you know, you go to the effort of making it. And if you don't eat it within three days, it's like, yeah, it's gone. And um, this is where fermentation really worked for me because you would make it and it will keep for this like the ones we've made earlier will keep for months and months and months so it's just a little bit of effort for a lot of return mm -hmm. it's really really good so i'm going to guess it's going to take about eight nice knife kim mm -hmm. it's, it's going to take uh, <laughs> <laughs> about eight tomatoes to do this and really it's chopper's choice for you to do so do you not take the core out no no, just leave it in and I've left it in. Eat away. Okay, I'm gonna see what um and you literally can just chop them any way you want. Chop them any which way. These tomatoes are, you know, not they're, yeah, they're not as ripe. ripe, ripe. Not. We have tomato plants in our greenhouse, oh, but they're not okay. ready, yeah. No, it'll be a summer. Learn it for summer. And then okay, maybe. so Anna Katermol is saying, I am from Russia originally and fermented veggies, especially cabbage, is a table staple there. We Perfect. love that, don't we? We love they that. Know that and lucky you to have been brought up with it i think um and let me see uh cynthia bernier is asking what if it's very hot where you live are there dangers no is there dangers to that to fermentation um if it's very hot where you live well then it will ferment quicker for sure but we just use the fridge as somewhere to put our fermented food and then it's not a problem okay um lori is asking lori de jesus um is it healthier to eat fermented salsa is it better for you than regular fresh salsa good question so whenever we are in the summer months fresh food is like brilliant for you because you know especially if you're getting it from a farm and it's you know you, you know it's got the natural bacteria in it and all of that Fresh food is absolutely brilliant for you. Uh, traditionally, fermentation was a way to preserve food for the winter months where there wasn't any fresh food. Mm -hmm. um, but back then, I guess, when they were doing all of this preserving, they didn't have the science now where they right. know yeah. that actually by fermenting it, you're increasing the bioavailability of it. Right. So whatever is good about this tomato is good when it's fresh, but it's like even better when it's fermented it's because you're getting the nu the nutrients are just immediately available to you yeah without all the digestion even it's like pre-digestion but do you know what else i which makes so much sense I about that i think that science is a wonderful wonderful thing but science is also killing us because it's taking us away from what human beings who are actually animals i knew human beings were animals too what we actually knew best which was you forage the land you grow your food you 
pick it, chop it, you eat it fresh when you can, and then you preserve it for another time. It's just so natural to do that. And bacteria is part of living. We used to pull, this, pull the, the carrot from the ground and wash it in a stream. The ground was full of bacteria. The soil is full of bacteria. The stream is full of bacteria. The water was full of bacteria. That's yeah. what we're reading. Everything today is so sterilized. Yeah. And we think that that's good. No, I'm it's definitely not. In this juice. Oh, tomato juice. Just up it goes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we're definitely we're definitely a few steps removed from nature for mm -hmm. sure. And there's something about this process that puts you back in touch with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's given. It's Oh, here we're back, we're back, we're back, oh. we're back. Um, are we back on? Yep, we're back on. They're all saying, oopsies, Ryan. <laughs> 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 oh, just blame Ryan. So yeah, go back to the... Hang on, I'll just wait for it to... This is about a minute a minute or so behind. So back, Christina sang. Oh, we're back. Ah, here we are. We're back again. Sorry, guys. Don't know what happened. <laughs> could have been a StreamYard issue. Could have been an um, internet issue. I think I maybe touched the cable. Ryan probably touched the cable. It was probably Durba's Confession. superfoods. The energy she's brought into my kitchen just... Oh, just He's like, mind-blowing. He's forgotten his technical abilities. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. I'm saying you brought, <laughs> you're, you're blowing uh, all, with all our energy over sauerkraut. Oh, not sauerkraut um, or salsa. Okay, so what were we talking about? B vitamins. You were saying about B vitamins? Yes, we were describing how this takes the... They're all you know, and they're all like, Ryan! <laughs> Her Ryan. <laughs> Sorry, go on, yes. This so takes... I was explaining how it takes, you know, the wonders of a tomato, for example, and it turns it into something that's bio... You know, all the goodness is now really readily absorbable, absorbable, absorbable in the body. Um, but also the process creates amino acids. It creates extra B vitamins. It creates enzymes. What's happening now? We've got... The house is now <laughs> fermenting. <laughs> Something. Do you know what I think it probably is? We had a block drain this morning, and I think that um, Susie's organized for Dinah Rod to come around and clean up, and I think that that's probably what they're doing. This is the beauty know. of these lives. You never know what. Dermot's cleaning out our digestive system and Dinah Ron's cleaning out the drains. It's an analogy, <laughs> a metaphor. I love it. Oh, we do so many of these, though, that, um, that oh, yeah, you just they're used to it. Yeah, they're used to it. Go on. Gonna... Sorry, so B vitamins. And... I'll get to my point eventually. Yes, yes get to your point eventually. The amino acids, B vitamins enzymes which mm -hmm. is uh, another great thing for your digestive system and also something that you stop producing as you grow older so you're putting them in mm -hmm. um what else and then obviously it has all the lovely probiotics all the natural bacteria is being preserved and multiplied in the jar so you're getting kind of all of these extra things on top of what the tomato gives you so the question was are they better than fresh and i would say yes at the moment yes especially because tomatoes aren't fully in season here we can't mm. go pick them off the tree or off the tree off, off the, the plant plant yeah um so yeah it's definitely better okay well I, this is an interesting one as well just let me ask why i'm going to keep chopping. to chop um so someone is saying and i can't even say who it was i can't remember now there's so many questions coming in saying that um it's hard i love sauerkraut she said it's hard to find it these days but i was explaining to someone the other day that the sauerkraut you buy in the supermarket is actually pasteurized isn't that correct so you're getting the taste but not you're not even getting the taste it, yeah. it's disgusting it's just sauerkraut <laughs> that is in the shop 
is disgusting. I mean the supermarket um, because it has been fermented and then they pasteurize it, which essentially means they have killed any of the living aspect of it that is so much part of the flavor profile. Um, so one of the, this would be des described as a sour food, but it's not sour in like, um, it's not sour in unappealing, it's sour in that it, it hits off that part of your taste buds, which feels alive. It's kind of the difference between a live vinegar and a pasteurized vinegar. Mm, you can tell the difference, mm -hmm. like one's, one's kind of dead and horrible yeah, and, yeah. and really, really pickly, sour. Yeah. And the other one does something to it your palate. Beer. It ha has like that yeasty yeah. fermented smell. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, but it's also doing something to your palate. It's doing something to those taste buds. So pasteurization really has a lot to answer for. And to answer your question about where to find it, you're best looking for it in a health food store in the fridge section. So if it's not in the fridge and if it doesn't say like unpasteurized or raw or whatever, then you know it has been put through the process of pasteurization and it's not the same thing. It's not as nice. Josephine Williams is saying, I, I also find um, kefir and kombucha interesting, which we make a lot of, um, as fermented liquids. I've heard something called Jun, J-U-N. Yeah. What is that? So Jun is essentially like a hybrid of kombucha, um, made the same way. The only difference is instead of using sugar and tea, you use tea and honey. So they kind of call it like the champagne of kombucha because you're using honey. I thought and honey, what you weren't supposed to use honey as a sweetener for kombucha. But it has been, it's like the, the SCOBY, which is what we call the, the, mushroom. the mushroom or the bacteria and yeast combination. It's like it's been modified to deal with honey. And it is delicious. You get that lovely kind of honey, meaty taste of it, but it's expensive to keep it going. Oh, is it? Yeah, <laughs> it's I can really imagine. expensive. A lot of vegans you know, don't eat, uh, a lot of people in this group are plant based. Yeah, so, so they, they do wouldn't eat. eat um, they do eat oh, honey, but it, you know, so it's not, they're not necessarily strictly vegan, but there's a lot of strict vegans don't eat honey. I personally, yes. I do eat honey because. You know, even though it is the bees' food source, I because the bees are not killed for it, I'm really horrified yeah. leaving all that pepper. No, I tell you why I'm going to leave this. This is going oh, to serve lid. as okay. serve a okay. purpose. So yes. I've literally just cut off the top of the pepper because I'll show you why. I, I know what you're doing. I've seen it before. I've seen um, it before. I'm thinking I might add some of this in, but maybe not all of it. Whatever you just, want, you'll use it later, no problem. Okay, I'll just put in a little um, bit. So I have to ask, though, uh, or I, I have to tell you guys that Dervla, uh, not surprisingly, is actually also a sourdough expert. She runs sourdough making workshops. She has the most incredible skill when it comes to sourdough. And whenever we talked about doing this, I had actually spoken to her about um, creating a sourdough workshop, like a full on where you get to learn how to make it from start to finish because let me tell you, it's very hard to get right first time. I'm a very experienced cook um, and uh, Lee, actually, our chef always says that I miss my vocation in life. He always goes, there's a chef in you somewhere. There I'm is. Like, it brilliant. definitely that is. That makes me so happy. Well, you care about food, that's a, I so do that's care about enough. Food. That's a big compliment coming from Lee because he's one of the most talented chefs I've ever met. Um, just in terms of his palate and his flavor combinations, he's, he's you know, Lee has worked for us for, I think, eight, nine months now. We've never had the same dish twice. You told me that the other day and I went, oh my God. Nine months that's... of cooking, apart from breakfast, cooking lunches and dinners. And apart from like a family staple, like a, a yeah. modification of a winter beef stew, which he still always changes. There's no beef in it, obviously. Um, and lasagnas and things for the kids. Never had the same dish twice. It's unbelievable. That's a good chef. Isn't yeah, it? That's a good chef. And he never cooked some recipes either. So anyway, now that I've given Lee a wrap, they're all jealous of me anyway for having Lee. Of course. So um, what was I going to say? What? So yes. So would you guys tell me in the comments if you'd be interested in a sourdough uh, workshop, however... We do have a slight limitation in that Derbala is going to France to live in a monastery for three months. <laughs> Tell us about that, Derbala. <laughs> and what are you doing now, by the way? Uh, That's what yes, you're doing now. I'm what I'm start. doing, so I've just chopped um, tomatoes and peppers. There and is a recipe, it. but, you know. Yeah, we, I we think, have a recipe card. For yes, it. I think everybody has their own kind of amounts of salsa. And I, and I really think recipes are a guideline. Don't feel tied down to them. Mm -hmm. I'm peeling some garlic because, um, you know, the recipe, I think, says one clove, but... Mm. I don't know how you Whoever go about it. puts one clove in something. Put as many, put the whole bulb in. Yeah, bloody right. I, I um, love garlic. I put so much of it in. We did open the jar of salsa. You peel it there without smashing it. You don't smash it, peel it. 
I'm not, I didn't want to make the big noise to smash it. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> no, I know to do that, but I didn't want to like, you know. Do you need me to teach you how to do this? By the way? Yeah, will you run a workshop? Yeah, I'll run a workshop for you. <laughs> Lee, I saw so many lazy cooking in the kitchen. I come in sometimes, oh, I look over his shoulder and I'm like, oh, are you doing that? Are you doing that? Like, you ah, tell him how whatever. To He's looking at me and, and I'm like, you need me to teach you. You want me to write, write this down for you how to do this, Lee? He's like, a little side business for you, Kim. <laughs> Uh, no, he humors me. He humors me, you have to say. He pretends, oh, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, very good. Yeah, and they just go the way anyway. Um, I'm going to put three cloves of garlic in, okay? Go for it. Three cloves of garlic. So, uh, and then I'm going to go down the bottom and say what they're saying about sourdough. I can imagine they're like, yes, yes, yes. They're all saying, yes, please, yes, please. Um, Cynthia is asking, are the workshops available online? Do you have workshops available online currently? So I have um, one course online, which is basically teaches five simple ferments to do. They're actually in all the years I've been teaching this, which will be 10 years next year. Of course it will, because that's when we met. I years. know. Mm -hmm. So it'll be 10 years next year. And in all those 10 years, I have um, boiled it down to five of my favorite ferments. So there's five things that I love to make. And let me tell you, if it grows, Durbla has fermented them. I've tried it. I've fermented I'm not anything. even joking. If yeah. it grows Apart from, from the children. ground or the tree or the plant, Durbla has fermented it. I have experimented a lot. <laughs> Some Her house most, is like a science experiment. Most, it most. is like it fizzles and pops. I now have a commercial kitchen. I know you so do. So it's you even do. more of a yeah. science experiment. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically, there's five ferments that I feel like I can't be without. They're kind of like a pantry staple. And my course is those five ferments then lead to like, you know, 26 different sauces or 26 different ways to integrate fermented foods into your diet. Wow. So, yeah. Amazing. Somebody, Gail Glaze is saying she, was, she would love to watch this hour do workshop, but she probably wouldn't make, make it because she doesn't have enough room in her kitchen. Yes, it's definitely does take over. <laughs> I mean, if you want another child, yeah. have to just have sourdough starter. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah I mean, you definitely need the space for it to rise and do whatever, but it's it's fascinating to understand the process, I think. It's really fascinating to understand. Yeah, and a lot of people don't understand that the reason why sourdough is so much better for you than regular bread is because it um, it's already partially fermented by the time it hits your gut. So yeah. you're fermenting it before you put it in your mouth, so your yeah. body's not having to work hard to break down the gluten and to... Can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, this is, I mean, it's the same with all ferments. Essentially, what you're doing is pre-digesting something. I know it doesn't sound brilliant, but you're pre-digesting something before you actually even eat it. So grains are difficult to digest. Nuts are difficult to digest. Pulses mm -hmm. are difficult to digest. And all the traditional ways of preparing food suggest you do something to it before it touches your mouth. So your body doesn't have to do all the work. So fermenting or, or making a sourdough means that you are pre-digesting those grains which are really hard on your body to digest mm -hmm. so the eating process is just you're getting the nutrition without the without the damage to your system essentially mm -hmm. um, and the same with these fermented foods you are doing the fermentation the pre-digesting beforehand so when you come to eat it your body's not having to do that like oh let's pull out the vitamins let's put out the you know minerals let's yeah, they're there really they're available. there they're just there your body just absorbs them yeah um i've had the chance to look at my ferments through the microscope and it is unbelievable wow. to see the light in there i think i had a video up online and i'll have to try and yeah, sort it out it was like the tiniest drop tip. times like 2000 it was in the university here in belfast amazing and it was mind-blowing just to see this like life buzzing through the food so good Amazing. Um, so Cynthia is asking, is that why sourdough is always so expensive due to the labor and time? Yes. Actually, yeah. I think sourdough isn't priced correctly. I think um, my my husband mm -hmm. also makes it. At one point, we thought, shall we make this for people? Mm -hmm. I'm like, there's no way. I'm no. Sell I'm making it and selling it for no. like four pound maximum. It's just, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, you it know? Is, yeah, it's so expensive. It but takes three days. Cheese. Yeah, three days. So. Um, so hard. And Gail's saying, oh, that's sad to know about the supermarket sauerkraut. What a waste to eat it. A lot of people just don't know. 
Uh, and Josephine is saying as well, that's good to know that shop bought fermented food has been pasteurized. Yeah. And uh, let me see. Have you made ferment? Cynthia's asking, have you made fermented fruit items for dessert? Is it possible to ferment fruit? It is. And using the technique that we are doing right now, we can also ferment some fruit. But what I would say is that fermenting vegetables gives you a long term ferment, you know, something that will stay in the fridge for a while. Fermenting fruit is very short. I'm shocked so, that you don't take off, sorry, the, the, the sh I would no, I would take that off the onion, but you don't want to be part of it. You're like, you know, but I would still take off the next really? case. Yeah. No? No? It's all good. Um, sorry to interrupt. Kim, Kim will run another This is what I do with Lee in the kitchen. I'm like, you leaving that, leaving that bit off. That one's a bit hard. Yeah. I'll take that off. Now you've um, attention to it. here, someone is saying, was there supposed to be jalapenos in this recipe? Because they're saying, so is it green pepper and not jalapenos? So You can add jalapenos in. Um, I just use green peppers because we're just wusses over here, aren't we? For, yeah. For yeah a lot of people don't like jalapenos. I love them. Yeah, love we can, we can um, add dried chilies in. Mm. But as I say, the recipe is literally a guideline. Don't feel like you're totally, you know, held to it. If you want jalapenos, put them in. Um, Cynthia is asking, I'm not sure if you talked about this, maybe I just wasn't listening, uh, which is quite possible. Um, at what age do you stop producing the enzymes? Um, it's not so much that you stop producing them, but as you age, you decrease creating them, which is kind of why when you when you think of an older person, their appetite is getting yeah. less and less. They just are, yeah, you're just not producing enzymes to the same way you would Of course, have. well, everything is the same with muscle. You know, you don't yeah. produce muscle, you don't produce hormones, you don't produce testosterone, your body yeah. just slows down. So would you say that as you get older, this is actually more and more important? Um, as you get older, yeah, oh gosh, I don't know if it's, I think keeping, keeping on top of your health for as long as you can. Is yes, I agree. Really important. I agree. Um, people always say to me, why do you, why am I so obsessive about, you know, working out and training and doing all kinds of, um, you know, on health and whatever. And I'm like, cause mm. like, I want to be old and, and well, well, yeah. you know, I want to be strong and healthy. My dad's in his seventies. I think he was, when was he born? 1947. So he's 40. He's 74 this year and he goes dancing every mm. single weekend like re like he dances for like three or four hours he still you know runs his business mm -hmm. he's he lives on a farm he's you know he's like a spring chicken you wouldn't yeah. honestly know that he was in his 70s Brilliant. he is as fit as a fiddle he bench presses every or bench press he does press ups and squats and like wow. and I, my all my grandmothers lived till they were in their 90s 99 mm. 96 so it I is possible old age is, yeah. it is possible old age we does country, not you say, so yeah. yeah different probably a different um, microbiome yeah, to begin probably, with but yeah. you know I think there's this misconception that old age means decrepancy and and that's just not true you can actually I have this kind of I said it once before in an interview and I didn't even think it through but I was like I want to die alive I kind of yeah. want to just yeah. like die I don't yeah. want to be like 10 yes, years of like where you're fading chronic getting, illness yeah, you chronic know illness, and, yeah. and that's possible it is possible to do that and to yeah. look after yourself a die alive i like that that's die alive that's a t-shirt that's yeah. my t-shirt my mom always says just put a pillow over my face if i ever get to that um, point where you have to like you know take me to the bathroom and yeah. just put a pillow over my face but i think you know we need to murder we need to i'm like i'm like a prison <laughs> if that happens but i appreciate the sentiment <laughs> i think we have to appreciate the chronic illness isn't a given you yeah. know and chronic illness is the accumulation of many bad years choices. of bad choices mm -hmm. so that's just do you need a spoon or what are we doing here so that is all the ingredients that all the kind of vegetable ingredients that i would use in a basic salsa of course you can add and take as you want um i tend to throw a few spices in here so we have got some well i think we don't need the lid in. i think i'll just do a wee shaky shaky go for it. That's a, no i don't care that's actually do you know what lee was putting this in our food and then he realized it look at it he, mm. this is actually a hot smoked Ooh. paprika mm -hmm. nice so how hot do you want that? I don't have to go fire ahead. So I want spicy, yeah. Okay, do let's... you want that or not? No? I'll just, because it's a difficult tub to. Yeah. Okay, so we go for like a half a teaspoon? Yeah. Well, no, whatever. Yeah. A bit more? I don't care, yeah. Okay. I mean, it, I it smells so I would good, good actually. In. <laughs> do you want a big heap teaspoon? Throw a bit more in. Sure, okay. come on, why not? See, yeah. this is how flexible we can be with whatever we're doing. It's all going to taste. Lee said something to me the other day. Tastes I can't great. remember what it was. And I was like, uh... Baking is a science, but cooking is a philosophy. Totally. Mm -hmm. That's to you can't mess up a baking recipe. You can't mess up your sourdough recipe, but this is total chef freedom. I messed up sourdough a couple of times. 
It's really it, like it was the rest. Derby sent me a picture of hers. It was this beautiful big loaf, and mine looked like a pancake. Yeah, <laughs> like a okay, risen pancake. I've had some pancakes. It's fine. It's all part of the learning. Yeah. You learn by your mistakes. It took me so many bloody days as well. <laughs> okay, so this is some cumin seeds again. It's not traditional salsa recipe, but I like it this way. So I'm doing it by eye. So that would be like roughly five thing. sprinkles. Five sprinkles. <laughs> this is paprika. Do we want paprika as well as um? As regular? I don't know. I don't think what we if need you it. Want? No, not so much, not uh, anything else you want. No, I think we can. Like you could put oregano, oregano, oregano. And there, there's Are, um oregano, coriander or cilantro. Yeah, cilantro. Um, you have to say it like with the cilantro. Cilantro. cilantro or, <laughs> oregano. Both of those can go yeah. in. Um, what else? It's really up. It's whatever really up to whatever. Okay. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I am a well-trained eye, so I am going to guess that this is around about 800 grams to uh, 900 grams of um, ingredients. And we're going to, for every that kind of 800 grams to a kilogram, we can be a little bit flexible. We're going to use a tablespoon of salt, which is kind of at the ratio of 2% salt to our yeah, to the volume salt. of yeah, solids. Food. Okay, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. If anybody needs me to repeat that, I can, because it's just important. I that really have the urge, though, to get the scale and weigh it now, just to see how accurate she is. Okay. But listen, no, I'm the same as you. I, I would say you're right. Yeah. I would say you're right. I can this weigh my like eye. This is like 10 years. People, I look at people and they say, and I'm like, oh, there's about, I'm like, that's about 100 grams, there's about 82 calories, and that kind of like, how do you know I'm like years and years of weighing food and looking at calories? I have a great story for this. So about two years ago, I was invited over to the Guinness Book of Records sauerkraut making. Wow. So they had this big, massive thing in the south of England and they made, like they had a whole day event that hundreds of people involved. They chopped cabbage, chopped cabbage, chopped cabbage, and then put it into this massive big vat to ferment. And there was, there was kind of four experts there from all over. One lady from America, I was from here, another lady from England, another a professor had come along. And just before they put it on the scales to weigh it, they said, okay, bets in for how much it weighs. And I was 0.5 of a gram out. No, that I was I just kind of went, Okay, this and this and this and I got it like that literally point five. Yeah. yeah. So trust me. Do you know what I, you know what I can do that with? Suitcases for traveling. Oh, I, people I can, can say to me, Oh, I think I'm overweight. And because I lift in the gym every day, I'm constantly lifting 20 kilo plates, 25 kilo plates, 20 kilo dumbbells, 25, you know, I'm always lifting in and around those kinds of weights. So I can lift a suitcase and go, no, no, you're fine. That's about 23 kilos. Like, How do you know? I'm like, I just know. I know what yeah. 25 feels like. I know what 20 feels like. I can guess what. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm like the I'm like the suitcase wire to see if you're going to be over in weight. You could you could be at the airport. No, I can lift just them up. Turn. I can just be like, oh, 15 kilos, <laughs> ah, 11 kilos. Yeah, no. oh, brilliant, brilliant. So there you go. We we've got we know we know we're talking about. <laughs> yes, we do. So for this, then I'm going to use one tablespoon of salt. And we were having a bit of a discussion earlier about which salt we should use. So we've got a uh, sea salt. Of salt here. So this is just a uh, sea salt, um, like this Flaked is the molden sea salt. There we go. Or this is the Celtic uh, sea salt, more like um, that's sel de mer, isn't it? Where yes, it's yeah, that's salts. exactly what it is. Celtic sea salt. Um, this one has been stripped of all its natural minerals to make it white. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. uh, of course you did. <laughs> Like, of course, can. Um, <laughs> and uh, there's like salt has something like is it 82 or 84 natural minerals in it? Um, and so the, the Himalayan salt does as well, and so does the Celtic sea salt. So this salt is literally made in Normandy, I think it is. And all they do is they have these huge big vats in this shallow seawater where the sun basically just dries the seawater, evaporates it away, and what is left is Celtic sea salt, and that's how it's harvested in mine. So this really is just out of the sea sea salt it tastes delicious mm. so you could use table salt but I, table salt like nobody should no you can't use table salt nobody should, uh, honestly guys if you have table salt traditional table salt in your house do your health a favor and throw it out it is the worst possible thing that you can put in your body i am evangelical about salt we mm. only have i don't even know why this is here because I, lee must have bought it maybe if we'd run out of this yeah but like we would never normally use this we always use celtic or we use pink because this is full of the natural minerals that your body needs and I'm going to get, can I give them one more tip before we go on? Yeah, so please. So here, see so if anyone suffers from cramps, right? I have some up here because I made it for Ryan. Ryan was suffering from cramps recently, and I don't know why. Also, Rachel, who is my customer services manager, was suffering from cramps because she's pregnant. And I made her Solly. You know what Solly is, obviously, yeah. don't you? 
I remember you drinking that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sally is basically where you put, um, you saturate water with Himalayan mountain salt so it cannot take any more. So what happens is the negative ions of the salt surround the, the positive ions of the water and the positive ions of the water surround the negative ions of the salt. It becomes completely saturated. This is Sole. How you know what Sole is if there's still some salt crystals left in the bottom, which you can see there is in this. Um, and you basically just keep adding salt and letting it dissolve at room temperature until you still have, you can't see those, some salt crystals in the bottom and that's how you know it's completely saturated. So um, if you take a teaspoon of this in the morning and a teaspoon at night, after about three days, it will eliminate all cramps. If you're pregnant or you just have muscle cramps, it helps with muscle soreness. This is what really good salt will do for you. Table salt, throw it out. I think, I think table salt is the reason why salt gets bad rep. Yeah. Because it's on the, you know, people use it as their salt. It's in commercial, you know, processed food. It's what gives salt the, oh, God, you better stay off salt yeah. or go on a low salt diet. When you're using proper mineral rich salt, it's like. Yeah. Use it's, away. Yeah. It's, it's very hard to for overdose you. on it. Yeah. And it tastes and so, so much different. It doesn't taste sharp. Oh, totally. It tastes like really yeah. salt. Uh, I can't even think. Well, well it's, it's again, it's earthy. it is a taste though. That's yeah. the thing, you know. When you start to look at taste, your taste buds are responding to salt or sour or sweet or, yeah. you know. So it, it's doing the right thing to your taste buds. You're you're kind of recognizing it for what it is. It's as a difference between to, a white distilled vinegar, like we were saying earlier, yeah. on like a an apple cider vinegar with the mother still in it. It's yeah. the difference in those two. two yeah, vinegars. absolutely. Okay. Um, so we're going for this salt, obviously. <laughs> we're going for the really good salt. And um, there was something I was going to say about to add, but it doesn't matter. It's gone now. So we're going to go for a generous tablespoon. Oh, I remember now. When I suggest that we use this much salt in a bowl straight up, people always go, that's too much salt. But you have to appreciate that this salt is doing a very important job. Mm -hmm. So firstly, the amount of salt that we put in here dictates uh, whether or not good bacteria grows or bad bacteria grows. So it's actually doing a job of making sure no bad bacteria grows. So the tablespoon is really, really important. Um, but also then when it comes to eating this, you know, when we're going to uh, eventually tuck into our salsa, we are not going to be eating the whole jar of salsa. No. So we're not going to be eating a tablespoon of salt. So yes. Someone was saying to... the other day, we have this no bouillon, um, no chicken bouillon paste that we use for a seitan recipe. And someone in the group was like, but there's so much salt in this. Why is this called to be in like, a, you know, saying you so much salt. And someone was like, you're using a teaspoon oh. of it. It's like yeah, there's a lot of salt in the entire jar, but you're not using the entire jar, you're using yeah. a teaspoon. So the, the, the salt is minimal. So that's what you have to remember. But I think we're programmed. Salt is bad, salt is bad, salt yeah. is bad. Salt is not bad if you're using it correctly. Yeah. I'm sorry, Cynthia is asking, so is it one tablespoon for 800 grams, so two tablespoons for 1,600 grams? Yeah, although I would say you've kind of got that 800 grams to, 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 to a, a kilo. To a kilo, yeah. so I would maybe one and a half tablespoons yeah. for Yeah, and then exactly that, if you're scaling up, you know, just... What happens if they use table salt? Does the recipe not work? It will work, but you've got to remember table salt has got caking agents in it as well, and mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is give this the best opportunity so there's two yeah, things chemicals out of it not yeah adding them in. not adding them in you know there's two things that i'm going to point out um as really just it doesn't matter what i'm mixing here the two things that are really important for a successful ferment is firstly the salt so get the right ratio of salt in Gorgeous. doesn't it smell great mm. and then the second important thing is which I will come to will be the use of this and what this is for. And really they're the only two things that we have to kind of pay attention to. Everything else is like really flexible. But if we're using table salt, just remember we are going to be creating a situation where you're putting some crap into your jar. So therefore I'm, I'm not responsible for how it turns out. <laughs> yes. No, absolutely not. I'm going to wet you a towel to wipe your hands. Oh, off. yes, for after this. So this is, you know, a really easy ferment because the tomatoes are wet. Here's lots of juice. Now I'm just going to fill up my jar. And something to the second point, the second kind of important point that I will come to is that I want to press down the ingredients to just de decrease the amount of oxygen that might be trapped in there. So you can see as I press down, there's lots of juice comes up. It's a nice juicy affair. Um, obviously, if we were making this fresh- Do you sterilize the jar? 
just wash it with hot water is fine. Do um, you want the bacteria? Yeah, and you know, this <laughs> is the with lovely... Water, not with fairy liquid? Yeah, definitely. This is the lovely thing about fermentation is that, um, I don't know if anybody cans, we don't really can here, but, um, you know, we don't have to be so precious about uh, sterilizing everything. Mm -hmm. Just make sure it's clean, obviously. Yeah. that's And that's boiling sufficient. hot water is a really good way of doing it. But also what I used to do with my jars is just put them in the oven. And let them, you yes, know, and let perfect. the oven. So just, you know, that's what you would do if you're making jam to sterilize the jars. You would simply just put them in the oven and heat them up, and that kills all the germs in them. So I just put mine in a hot oven for maybe 10 minutes, but be very careful lifting them out because they're absolutely piping hot. And obviously, you never want to put this rubber lid in either. To yeah. The oven, you would take that off. Right. Shall I just wash my hands? Is that no, here. the better? Well, unless oh. you want to, it's up to you. Um, well, you I, if that's wet, I can just wipe them. Okay. That was clean this morning. That's so, fine. um, how good was that for guesswork? Yeah, that's, that's look at pretty that. much everything in the jar. Yeah. Um, and then what I'm going to suggest now is this little lovely thing we. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm not top your arm off. What? Oh, you couldn't see oh, that. Can't see. Sorry, right. sorry, I was just taking off the. Um, Get with it, Durbla. Sorry. Come on, get with it. Sorry. Kim's been at me for years to go live and do I all this have, stuff. And I, just I have. I've been like, shocking. I've been like trying to shove her into the online shy. world. The world needs you. Hammer shy. <laughs> Don't go to a monastery in France. Go online. Oh, yeah. I need to tell you about the monastery, people. actually. Yes. Um, I could go online from the monastery. They're pretty you good. Could. Going, they're, they're a very progressive monastery. Um, but I was brought over there to teach fermentation, and they're just... They're just so cool. Yeah, They're just amazing. cool people. Um, okay, so the second important point is we are trying to make this an uh, environment where no bad bacteria grows. And to do that, we need to take out one of the elements of spoiling. So we're going to take out oxygen. And we've kind of done a great job of packing everything in and it's sitting and it's liquid. It's nicely kind of tucked in there. But by its nature, it wants to come up out yeah. of the liquid it wants to and the busier up. it gets the more it will want to come out the more it will want to come out so we actually do have to do a little bit of kind of interaction here to force it to stay down um normally if i don't have kind of a, a natural prop from what i'm using i would use this is a candle holder from yeah. ikea candle holders and normally IKEA just as an fyi <laughs> ikea belfast literally sold out of glass candle holders when durbel started teaching her workshops People used to actually meet after the class in the, oh, in really? the candle holders. Oh, really? like on the black market. <laughs> candle holders in the black market. They buy their jars and they buy their candle yeah. holders. Um, but, you know, we can get creative with the foods that we're using or some people use like a, a bag with water in it. I'm not particularly keen on putting the plastic well, bag sure, in why there. Why don't we develop, if there's enough people doing this in the world, is there no one developed? Um, there are some, yeah. Are like there? some people have uh, designed jars that are like coffee um, percolators, you know, that you oh, push that down right. or there's other ones that have like a way of sucking at the air. And yeah, you can get, you can spend a fortune on fermenting right. kits or you can just... Use the top of a use the top of a, pepper. Of a capsicum, yeah, or a, a capsicum. capsicum, yeah. So this allows oh. me to push that down just a little bit more, so the capsicum is now. So you want? Do you want to pour away any of that liquid, or I don't know if we have to. No, let's just see. Oh, there's a little bit of little. Oh, sorry, a little bit of spilling. Lop out. Hang on, let me get you. I'm just. I'm like your sous chef today. I know. I'm laughing. Going, you're you're working for me here. Now making loads of money. Uh, making loads of money. Making loads of noise. <laughs> I'm not making too much money, although it's in the brain or not enough, actually. Maybe. Um, yeah. So this that point of pushing everything down is kind of one of those crucial little little things that we must not ignore because otherwise, what will happen is everything, all those little bits, will want to rush up. Okay, no, and no, no, no. oh, thank you. Everything will want to rush up. Fermentation isn't normally this messy. I, I would I, I would tend to disagree. Maybe it is not for Darwin, but it is for me. <laughs> Maybe Darwin was just messy. messy. Well, we showed them our, here's one we made earlier, and, um, and will we put the microphone in as well? Yes, we can do. But just, just to conclude that point, if I didn't put something in to force all that down, the ingredients would, you know, just float around the top, and on the top there would be oxygen. You mean like this? Yes. Like that. I forgot about my lid. I'm going to blame Chef Lee. We can, we, can put, we can put can one on. Can we put a lid on? We can put a lid on. I actually have lid lids on. of these, so. We can 
drop yeah. one of those. So this in. is oh, so this is what you don't want to do, okay? Well, you had this in the fridge actually, yes, which is did. kind of um, which gorgeous. is interesting, and you're probably going to eat it. Quite you're not, so you're not quickly. supposed to put it in the fridge. I can't remember. No, we we'll leave it out. I did this to make for it. Um, um, yeah. so we can leave it out, leave it out oh, okay. and what happens is the bacteria like kind of a room temperature to do their thing. Your kitchen's always being warm. really warm i'm like sweating here yeah um but i remember you had yeah, that yeah. problem with uh yeah. it was fermenting stuff too fast. too fast especially the keepers and things yes mm -hmm. so um room temperature allows the bacteria to, to do the job they're going to do which is start to break down all of the food and pre-digest it for you to transform it into this food now that's abundant in uh, good bacteria and the process is kind of it's seeking the sugar anything that looks like a sugar molecule and it's breaking it into um breaking it down to give extra probiotics that's that's the process that's happening it basically feeds off the sugar feeds, feeds off the sugar. sugar yeah um now when it's doing that it creates carbon dioxide as a byproduct so you'll hear in a moment just the little hiss that starts to happen and this really begins at around about day three so we're, we we put it in the jar, leave the jar at room temperature. It feels like nothing is happening. And then by day three, it starts to hiss. It starts, you know, there's activity happening. You know, it's fermenting. And then by day five, it's actually ready to eat. You can open the jar and start to tuck Would in. Would you then put it in the fridge? Then you put it in the fridge because okay. that keeps it at, um, that keeps it as a nice temperature. I would say if this one was made how many days ago? Five days ago? Yeah. Four days ago? Uh, yeah, today's the 19th. And if it was made and put in the fridge, it probably is not ago. so different to this. It yeah. probably still is quite salty. But we do need to pack it down. I well, I did know we needed to pack it down, but I thought we were going through it quite quickly that we we didn't. So Yeah. But I forgot. I, I'm a I'm a um I'm rusty in Well, the we can pop this in. It's yeah. been a while. We yeah. can just pop Go this in. It. I'm imagining I'm gonna open this and there'll be nothing. No. So yeah. Except a really good smell. A really good smell. Wow. It smells so good. Yeah. So we, we should leave this out for a few days to ferment now. Nice. So just even a tiny bit of weight. So liquid. You always want to have, I remember that on top. You always want to have liquid on the top and not any of the vegetables. Yeah. Now you might get a few wee floaters, but it's just not, it's not enough to be concerned about. What you don't want is the whole surface being covered in food mm -hmm. because then it might, uh, the oxygen will hit it and it'll form a, a mold, which is just what we don't want. Okay. And if it did form a mold, do you have to throw it out? Or can you just pick like jam? You can just scrape the mold off? And I'm a bit of a that? scrape it off. Me too. For some people, especially something that's really liquidy like this, the mold can oh, have sent stuff down. Right. Yeah. And if you were in any way feeling like your health is compromised, I wouldn't advise it. For me, mm -hmm. I'd go, I don't mind. I'm like, you could probably throw Dur anything Dur into the bacteria me. and the guts are like, bring it on! I'm we're ready for a fight! <laughs> It is true. Um, <laughs> this was amazing. Right, listen, do you know what I really want to do? So I'm going to hand this over to you really carefully. I really want to get like my microphone. Will you hear this, Ryan? Are you ready? Right, yeah. Ryan's concerned now as to what I want to do. I hope it's not going no. to. I did open it earlier. But I know, and I'm like, brought it into the kitchen. It was kissing, remember? I really want you to hear what this sounds like. When did you make this one? This one was made, oh, definitely over a week ago. So I want you to hear that this is what it should. Has it been out on the shelf the whole time? It's been out on the shelf the so whole time. So I want you to hear what this and is And I did like. open it earlier. Is it going to explode? Do I need to stay back? I do. <laughs> I don't think it's going to explode. Just so you know, I took the weight out earlier. Hang on, hang on, wait. Okay, you ready? Okay, you ready? Go. Oh, it didn't oh, do it because I opened it earlier. I'm such an anti-climax. Uh, sorry. I said, you don't open up. We like to get the microphone in I know, here. and it was hissing earlier on. It was oh, doing that. Smells good. Smells so it's good. like Ryan, smell that. Oh, and Ryan's got his headphones on. You have to smell it. Someone else has to smell it. Ooh. <laughs> is that a, a good o or a ooh, yeah. oh? Let me smell it again. The garlic really comes yeah, no, comes through. Very, very good. It really is good. Really is good. And do you know what else we used to do? We used to make water kefir, which is a fermented beverage, which is really delicious. And then I used to drink it with gin. I know. Does that kind of cancel out the benefits of that? It makes water drinking paper? just. It makes, it makes drinking, drinking okay because it, yeah. it replenishes you, it rehydrates you. So yeah, and it makes drinking um, win win. Yeah, I, I felt like it was more of a health food, my gym at that point. So <laughs> it, I could just drink more of it. I did. Used to, people used to come and I used to be like, gin and kefir? And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was like, I must make water kefir again. Actually, you know what? We'll teach Lee how to make it. I'm yeah. Just getting, it was Maya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when Maya was sick um, in hospital, my daughter had her appendix out and she didn't eat for 
two weeks. She lost so much weight. She lost about 16 pounds. And Maya does not have 16 pounds to lose. She's only 11. Um, and Derva left her around bottles and bottles and bottles of kefir to drink just to replenish her body and to really get it back in health. And she had like the fastest recovery from her illness. Because she would have been in a lot of antibiotics yeah, she two, as well. She actually had two... Um, two operations she had to go and have the append the appendix burst she had to have them removed and then there was like a pocket of pus that she was disgusting she had to go in and get removed again and so yeah she was on so many antibiotics and um she made such a fast recovery so brilliant really yeah these little microbes are just amazing so this one this so this is new today medium and older yeah and you can see the difference actually yeah, in the color really i mean can. my my have more orange peppers in there but you can see the you know the difference yeah. one looks fresh one looks fermented <laughs> yes yes it really does this one i'd say is pro it's definitely over a week i can't remember exactly what date i meant it on I, can you use no, a regular think. screw on mason jar style lid um yes and no so i would say yes you can do it if you make sure you've got something really pushing it down and no liquid is touching the top but if it's a metal lid, this liquid, essentially fermentation uh, drops the pH of something. So it ends up being somewhere around four pH, which starts to erode a metal oh, lid, okay. which is not. No, which is not what you want. Desirable. Um, guys, uh, before we go, so there's, everyone's just saying this is such a great class. People are saying I absolutely would have paid for this. Um, Dervla, they're all asking about your cookbook. Can you tell us quickly about your cookbook and then about, well, are you in a rush, right? No. Okay, good. Do you have another five, 10 minutes? Yeah. Tell us about it. which one do you want? You um, well, this one okay, has so a salsa on cookbook. the cover. They're all asking, are these recipes in your cookbook? Where yes. can they buy it? Give yourself a plug. Okay. And then well, tell us about the monastery. The book, is, uh, the book is on Amazon or in any kind of um, online store. This is the American version, which they chose the salsa for the cover because it is um, oh, just everybody's favorite. Mm, Yay. Yeah. Um, so on Amazon, and it really is a comprehensive... Oh, a lovely woman down in Dublin, um, the publisher's oh, okay. photographer. It's it, The photography in the book is, is stunning. It's really stunning. Um, it's not fully vegan in that I do, uh, at the time I was fermenting um, milk. Yeah, but you're not vegan, so... 95%. 95%. Um, I would have, I'd, I was confessing earlier on, I would definitely have an egg. Yeah. Well, we um, have free range chickens. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal some. I'm going to send you home with some. <laughs> And uh, yeah, but I don't like the milk I would have would be fermented. So or I've actually, you, that you would have got it from the farm. I would have got milk raw, well. milk, raw yeah. milk. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very particular about like you know what I do get, mm -hmm. whatever bracket of food I'm eating. Um. So yes, there's a few milk recipes in there, but it's just essentially all the experience I've had of fermenting different vegetables and ways to integrate it into your diet. Wonderful. And Anna is saying, I have been making salsa forever. Let me start down again. Um, and I could never figure out how to make it last that long. Complete game changer. We'll start putting this type of, <laughs> we'll start putting in this type of jar and your techniques to store. I learned so much today and we'll try your recipes for sure. Oh, okay. Guys, we are going to give away one of Derva's cookbooks in a oh. second. Tell us first before you go about the monastery. Uh, Derva, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so the monastery is the monastery of Thich Nhat I think that's I think where think I need to be. <gasps> oh my, my God. Let my ideas flow. Yes, totally. Can I fly first class? To France? <laughs> I think you can just get the yacht. Just take the yacht. And <laughs> um, it's the monastery of Thich Nhat Hanh, who was a Viet Vietnamese Buddhist monk who was exiled from Vietnam because he, you know, stood up for the Vietnamese War. And they're a really radical monastery. They're like all about climate change. They're all about, you know, just he's kind of the father of mindfulness. Um, so very much mindfulness-based practice, very little, like not Dharma, you don't have to do the whole kind of Buddhist, you mm. don't have to be a Buddhist to go there, but they run international retreats all year long, apart from obviously current current times where COVID has stopped all of that. And um, I am going over, I've been going over for the past three years where I take the produce from the farm and I put it kind of, I put it to good use and ferment it there and have kind of instilled with the monks this practice of fermentation, a bit like a, is it chartreuse, that mm -hmm. drink? Green chartreuse. Where only two monks ever know the recipe That's at right, a time. Yes. Yeah. And then if one dies, the the other they monk has off. to fight. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so we have that. There were two monks that knew all the fermentation tricks and I would go back and kind of keep working on them with, with all of this. But this year I'm bringing my whole family and we're going to be there for two or three months 
part of the community, working on the farm, fermenting everything, and having a nice time. Darla, we should we. My, my mind's ticking. We're <laughs> we should not... stream from there. No, yes, not even that. We should create a. We should create. A, we should. We should create an online program. You teach it, and Ooh. I'll sell them. Yeah, we could. And, but an online, like you've been talking about doing that for years. Well, no, you've been talking. About I've been talking about doing it for years. <laughs> But actually, we could we could create an online uh, an online course, basically teaching people the basics of fermentation mm. and the basic recipes. And let's yeah, I mean, it's with. very very simple. This is the thing; it's like such common sense. And once you mm -hmm. engage with, you're like, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and then the more of these fermented foods you take in, the better you feel. The you just you the more you want, the more you become intrigued about where your food comes from, the choices you're making. You know. And, and actually your palate starts to change. One of the most significant things that happened to me was I could taste sugar from a mm -hmm. mile away. Mm -hmm. It was like my, my palate became so trained to sour that I would like lift up something that was sweet and just go, oh my God, yeah. I cannot. Do you know that one of the ways they, one of the easiest ways you can test whether your body is acid or alkaline, have you ever heard this, is mm. to um, is to not suck a lemon, but to take a slice of fresh lemon and to put it in your mouth and how you respond to the taste of it or how, how much you enjoy it or don't enjoy it is a very, very uh, fast and efficient way. It was a very old litmus test they used to do as to how acidic oh, wow. acid your body is. So if you can, like, I can pick up a lemon and suck it without even making a face. Yeah. And so I'm, and whereas some people would taste a lemon, a fresh lemon, and they're like, oh, oh, and it's really, really sharp and sour to them. And that means wow. their body is very acidic. Whereas, because uh, lemon is, uh, is acidic outside the body, but alkaline inside the body. And so whenever it, you, it hits your taste buds, it actually has an alkalinity test rather than an acidic, uh, which is weird. So that's what, that is mm, when they used to test oh, wow. it. So if you want to test how alkaline your body is, which is the best way you can mm. be for your health and um, your health and well-being, simply pick up the slice of a fresh lemon and put it in your mouth. And if it's, of course, it's going to be sharp, but if it's really unpleasant, yeah. your body is very acidic. You probably have too much sugar, maybe too much, the things that cause your body to be too acidic are um, sugar. Sugar, sugar, and sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar. <laughs> Meat, alcohol, and stress are actually the worst causes of um, an acid environment. So, um, yeah, so it's, I think it's a, a, you should all try it. Now you're going to be rushing home and go to lemon and try it. So that's Do you know what I've just digest. realized picking up this lime <gasps> is that. We just forgot to put it in. We forgot to put it in, but it's okay. Lime is in a traditional. Mm -hmm salsa recipe to give it that um you know zing and it can go into the ferment and what it does is immediately help lower the ph so it helps brings it down into that kind of acidic environment but um we don't have we can put it in for taste i could squeeze it on later if i wanted to but it's no biggie if i've forgotten yeah just so that you know if you're looking at the recipe going it's a heck. philosophy not a science yes it is and also just because you were talking about the acid alkaline thing just to say yes this becomes acidic it becomes a ph of four that's ideally you know where we're heading for but it is the same as eating a lemon in that it has an alkalizing effect so when you eat this acidic mm -hmm. food it has your body, um, it has an alkalizing effect on your body. Yeah, just so it has a really uh, neutralizes, um, neutralizes a lot of the acid as well. Because you should always yeah. try and eat a lot of alkaline foods, it really is um, one of the best things you can do, right? Let's give away one of your cookbooks. Can't believe how long we've been on for. This is amazing. No, this is what happens when I start talking about fermentation. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm spinning through the comments. This is how we do it, and then I am going to, you're going to shout out uh, stop, and whoever's name is at the top is the person who wins. Oh, okay, stop. About, oh, shit. Oh, hang on. It is Cynthia Bernier. Cynthia Bernier, you are at Congratulations. The, your comment is at the top. I wasn't expecting her to say stop so quickly. <laughs> Normally, it's a much more considered. It's like, your lucky day. Uh, stop. <laughs> Um, Cynthia, you have won a copy of the book. Thank you so much for um, all of your wonderful comments. So uh, let us know. So my team will be in touch. I see my team are watching. So if someone from my team could possibly contact Cynthia, did I say Cynthia? Cynthia, um, get her address. She's saying, oh, so nerve wracking. Um, get her address. We will make sure that Darbla, before she goes to the monastery, signs your book <laughs> and that we get that sent off to you. Um, can I just say, this was actually, uh, like I was saying to Ryan earlier, I was like, oh, you don't need to worry. Was it you said to camera? I'm saying to somebody, I don't need to worry about Darla. She's a pro. I think it was, right? She's a pro at, you know, being in front of the camera. And 
And actually, but you really are so much more of a pro than I ever even <laughs> imagined. I'm an undiscovered talent, Wasn't really. Wasn't she amazing? <laughs> She's been presenting for many, many years. Um, and so, Jarba, this was amazing. Thank you so much for oh, coming and spending your time. Thank you for inviting me. Today. Um, and I, to now my brain is like going TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. I definitely think there may be a fermentation online program coming at some point. Um, now you have three jars of salsa. Do you? Not. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm game. I'm game. Um, thank you so much for being here today. Thank Guys, you. hope you enjoyed the class. Hope you loved Dervla. Don't forget, you can pick up a copy of her book in the UK or in America or anywhere else in the world on Amazon um, and has all of her recipes in there. And uh, Cynthia, congratulations on winning the book. Hope you guys enjoyed this masterclass. We will see you next week at the same time, which is 2.30 p.m. UK time on Wednesday. Chef Lee is going to be making vegan lasagna. Yeah, we're all wanting comfort food, so you're getting comfort food. And it is absolutely epic. So uh, see you guys next week. If you have any questions for Dervla, I might add her into the group and try and get her to answer a few. So if you have any questions, would that be okay? Yeah, okay. Sure. Gonna add Dervla into the group. If you have any questions about the fermentation, um, don't bombard her, but you know, she'll try and maybe get to answer them. Uh, I am um, a very novice fermenter, Not but I can, um, I can answer a few questions too if, if she gets overloaded. But otherwise, see you guys next week at 2.30. And thank you so much for showing up live or for watching the recording. And thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. See you it's next week. Pleasure.